All right, so now we're going to learn about composite functions or composite transformations. And that's just a sequence of transformations. So maybe I might ask you to translate a figure and then reflect a figure. Um, that would be composite uh, transformations. Now, does order matter when you are doing your composite transformations? Yes, and we're going to see an example right now that shows you why order matters. So for this first one, we're going to first translate our figure along this vector, then we're gonna reflect over the y-axis. And the second one, the same exact figure, we're gonna reflect over the y-axis and then translate it. And we'll see that we wind up with different triangles at the end, which shows you that the order that you do your composite transformations in will matter. So let's go ahead and let's do the first one here. It says to first translate along the vector three, negative five. So I'm gonna take each point Go three to the right and down five. So this would be point B prime. And then C this would be C prime. And then A prime would be right here. So this is what your triangle looks like after the translation. Now it says to reflect over the y-axis. Since c prime is on the y-axis, then it will stay. It's going to become c double prime. Um, a prime is four units away from the y-axis, so a double prime will be four units away on the other side. And same with b. So this is your resulting figure after you first translate and then reflect. Now we're going to do it differently. We're going to reflect and then translate. So a reflection first, uh, C is three units away from the y-axis, so C prime will be three units away on the other side. Um, A is seven units away, so A prime will be seven units away on the other side. And same with point B. Oops, let me put it in the wrong place. So this is after the reflection, and now we're gonna do the translation, which states to uh, move all the points three to the right and five units down. So moving point B prime three to the right and five units down, we get B prime to be here, B double prime, sorry. And A double prime would then be right here. And C double prime would be right here. So we can see that the blue triangle in each of these examples is not in the same location, even though we did the same transformations. But the thing is, we did the same transformations in a different order. So that tells you that order matters when we're doing composite transformations. And now let's talk about how we know which order to do these transformations in. So this is how we write composite transformations in proper notation. Now, typically we would read a book from left to right when we're doing composite transformations the one that is closest to your, uh, to your uh, pre-image is the one that you actually do first. So we're actually reading from right to left. We would first do the reflection over the y-axis, then we would do the translation by a vector of negative three, five. So that's how we would read this, uh, tra this composite transformation in proper notation. Number one, First, do the reflection. Number two, then we do the translation. So if I tell you in English, um, we're first going to do a rotation of 270 degrees about the origin, and then we're going to do a translation of uh, by the vector 9, negative 3, what we would do is we would first write in our proper notation the translation even though that's the second transformation that we're doing. And then this open dot means that we're doing a composite transformation. 
and then we would write the rotation around the origin 270 degrees. Okay, um, and then that's triangle ABC equals triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now there's another way that you might see composite transformations. You might see it written like this. Um, and then we have in parentheses, This means the same thing. We would first do the reflect or the rotation because that's what's attached to my pre-image first. And then we would do the translation. So there's multiple different ways that you can write your composite transformation and proper notation. Um, these are the two that we will see most. All right, moving on to the next page. So what does the following mean? So um, in this proper notation, remember, uh, we read right to left, so the, the thing, the, the transformations that's attached to your pre-image is what we do first. So this first means that we first rotate the triangle 90 degrees about the origin. Then we do the reflection over the y-axis. All right. So number two, we're now going to write the composite function in mathematical notation. So um, I'm doing a reflection over the y, the x-axis, sorry, followed by a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. So we first would write down the rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's capital or lowercase, I don't care. Um, then we write an open dot to show that this is a composite transformation. And then we do the reflection over the x-axis. And it didn't tell you what figure you were um, doing this composite transformation on, but let's just say it's triangle ABC to get triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. All right, the next one. So we are going to, now it's not written in, um, in proper notation. Uh, but they're telling you what you're doing first. So first we're doing the rotation 180 degrees about the origin, and then we're reflecting over the line y is equal to one. So knowing our rotation rules, a 180 degree rotation around the origin would mean that um, your x and y values just uh, flip. So if c is at two, one, C prime is at one, two. So we can graph C prime. Oh, I apologize. I'm doing a different, I was doing a different transformation. I was doing a reflection over Y is equal to X. I apologize. Just a little bit of a brain freeze there. Um, the rotation 180 degrees would be negative two, negative one. So we just make X and Y negative. So C prime would be right here. And A prime would then be at negative four, negative six. And T prime would be at negative seven, negative four. So this is what your triangle would look like after the rotation, 180 degrees. And now we're going to reflect over the line y is equal to 1, which is this horizontal line right here going through 1 on my y-axis. So c prime is 2 units away from that line. So c double prime is going to be 2 units away on the other side. a prime is seven units away from that line. So A double prime is going to be seven units away on the other side. 
and t prime is five units away. So d double prime is five units away on the other side. So this is what your triangle would look like after we complete these series of transformations or the composite transformations. All right, so our last problem here now, we're gonna do another series of transformations. And for this one, uh, we first do the rotation 90 degrees about the origin. Um, and so again, it helps if you remember your rules. So D prime, um, remember we make Y negative and then we flip flop the X and the Y around. So negative 10, negative six. So I'm gonna graph that negative 10, negative six. is D prime. And then O prime, remember we make Y negative and then we flip those around. So negative eight, negative three. And then G prime, remember we make Y negative and we flip it. So negative seven, negative eight. So then I'm going to do my translation, which says I move three to the right and one down. So moving D prime, three to the right and one down, D double prime lies here. And O moving that three to the right and one down, that would be right here. And moving G three to the right and one down, that would put us right here. So this is triangle DOG after we did the composite transformation. All right, that is the end of this lesson.